I'm John Boykin from the Gilson Engineering Toledo, Ohio office. Today we want to talk about a powerful feature in the Siemens family of radar level transmitters. Echo profiles can show us exactly what the transmitter sees. From this we can see if we have a good installation and calibration or if we need to make any changes. Here we see a couple of models of the uh, Siemens transmitters. On the left we have the Siemens LR560 which is used primarily for solids and granular applications. And at the right, we have a couple different versions of the LR250, which is a liquid level transmitter. Both these units have a, the ability to show the echo profile directly on the screen. Another model, the ProBellU not shown, can be, uh, we can take a look at the echo profiles remotely via heart. The LR560 uh, level transmitter has an integral keypad and by just hitting a couple of buttons, we can take a look at the uh, echo profiles integrally. Now here I'm showing a picture of an echo profile on the LR250, and for that we need the hand programmer. And really all we need to do is go into the program mode, jog down to maintenance and diagnostics, then to echo profile, and we'll take a look at the uh, echo profile just as we see on the screen right now. Now that we've pulled up an echo profile on the screen, what does this all mean? Well, looking at the upper left-hand corner, the number C, semicolon 38, shows us the confidence is 38. The confidence is a dimensionless number uh, that tells us after we've done all the work, we've taken a look at the echo returns, we've compared it to algorithms and everything, what does it mean? Anything above about 10 is good. In this case, 38 would be excellent, probably working or bouncing off of a water-based application with a high reflection. To the right of that, we have A, T, F. This is showing us in this case that the algorithm is true first. And that's going to be default, but depending on the application, we may need to change, may need to change that. To the right of that, it shows D9.00. That's telling us that the distance from the sensor flange, or the reference point on the reference gauge, is 9 feet away. To the right of that, we have some buttons that we can uh, select by hitting the up or down arrow buttons of the hand programmer. And we can use that to make the uh, display pan left or right, pan up or down, and then zoom into a certain part of the display. The eighth one down there, which looks like a little uh, echo, that's uh, by scrolling down to there and hitting enter, we take another measurement. And below that, number nine is the exit. By highlighting that, hitting enter, we go back into the program mode. Besides having the integral display that can show echo profiles, there's a couple ways we can take a look at it remotely uh, via heart. Siemens offers a software package called PDM, and that's available for less than $100 for the single tag version. Uh, PDM uh, includes all the drivers for all the Siemens products and actually probably hundreds if not thousands of drivers for other manufacturers' products also. Pactware is a product, especially it's uh, manufacturer and field bus independent. And from that, you will download drivers from the Siemens website for all the products you need to communicate to. Nice thing about the heart is if it's a uh, sensor in a remote location on top of a silo or terrible weather, you can, commu you can communicate to it uh, remotely indoors and actually get a better uh, resolution echo profile than you can on the integral display. Here's an example of a good echo, and right now this is an example of being shown on PDM from Siemens. As you can see, it's a multicolor, uh, little uh, higher resolution display. In this example, the blue line is the echo uh, going left to right on the x-axis, that's the distance away from the sensor face, so look, we're looking downward the further we go. And the y-axis is the amplitude of our return. So in this case, we have a uh, pretty strong return at about the six foot uh, distance from the sensor face. The red line is what Siemens defines as their TVT or time bearing threshold line. Uh, some manufacturers, or some people call it a mapping line. What that line tells us is that no echo is going to be considered as a valid echo unless it exceeds the red line. And in this case, the only echo that we have exceeding the red line is at the six foot level, and that's a good echo for us. Here's an example of an echo profile showing a false obstruction above the actual level. 
In this particular one, it's six foot, we have show a good echo at the actual level, but at two feet, I'm getting a strong echo that is higher than our red TVT line, so the radar gauge selects that as our true echo. In this case, it could be a pipe, it could be the bottom of a, uh, a mounting nozzle, could be anything that uh, reflects the, the energy that's going to be above our actual target. Now, unless we do anything, it's always going to select that false echo as our actual level. So what we'll need to do is go into the program and do a couple different things. Uh, the first thing I would try to do would be an auto false echo suppression. And the actual uh, procedures d vary between the uh, models of level transmitter we're talking about. You can refer to the manual or give us a call at Gilson Engineering to uh, step you through that. Here's an example of something we can see called double reflection. With double reflection, the energy hits the wall liquid, comes back up, goes to the radar gauge, but some of it actually bounces off the roof surrounding the radar gauge, bounces back down again, hits a liquid, and it could happen uh, you know, many times. Generally, the second echo uh, would be the only one to worry about, but if the second echo is in some cases stronger than the first echo, the true echo, then the radar gauge would indicate the level as being twice as far away from the radar uh, sensor face as it actually is. In this case, we definitely want to make our algorithm true first, so it selects only the uh, first valid echo. Again, the times you worry about this is if the uh, radar gauge is mounted, um, say in a vessel with a parabolic tank or a parabolic top, or even a concrete vessel uh, that's got a flat uh, reflective uh, concrete roof. Sometimes that can give us a very reflective signal. In this example, we have a very weak return from our actual level. Uh, in fact, looking at the graph here, the echo does not even exceed the red TVT line, so it will not be considered as, the, uh, as a potential actual level. So what can cause a weak signal? First thing we want to look at is to make sure that the uh, level sensor for liquid applications is pointed straight down, so we bounce straight off the uh, liquid level back up to the, uh, the receiver. For granular applications, uh, I'd say probably 80% of the time I do point straight down, but there are some instances where you want to tilt the signal or the sensor uh, towards the bottom center of the silo to get a, a stronger return. Also, and you'll see this mostly in the granular applications that are very dusty, you want to make sure that the nozzle and the sensor face are fairly clean. It doesn't have to be spotless. Uh, actually, the LR560 can take a fair amount of uh, buildup uh, before it uh, attenuates the signal. But uh, if you do have an application that uh, builds up over time to the point where the signal is no longer uh, visible, the LR560 has a port on it that you can uh, uh, attach uh, instrument air and a solenoid valve to periodically uh, blow off the uh, any dust buildup from the sensor face. So I hope I've given you some ideas of how you can use the uh, echo profiles to diagnose what might be going on with your uh, level controls. Um, what you can also do, feel very free to uh, give us a call and text us a picture of your echo profiles. We can take a look at it and uh, normally we can uh, diagnose what's going on. Please visit our website at www.gilsoneng.com. Thank you very much.